can you just lift your hands toward heaven? Father God, Lord, we thank you, God, for this time in your presence, God. Lord, we thank you for your word that's about to come for you, God. Lord, we thank you for all the praises, God, that have went up before you. Lord, we thank you for who you are. Lord God, now I pray, God, that you hide me behind the veil. That the words that I speak are your words. Lord, allowing them to decrease as your Holy Spirit increase. Have your way, God. Bless your people. Bless your people. Jesus Christ that I give up. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. First, I want to give honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. My strength and my redeemer. To pass the bell me. First Lady Bellamy, I certainly want to honor them and to all of the ministers and elders on the roster, the missionaries, everyone in their respective places. I do want to give honor. And to you, the congregation, God's people, I bless you in the name of Jesus. I, 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 I want to preach today from a subject that I've preached before, listening to the songs that have been sang today, just the atmosphere that's in the sanctuary, I know that the message is fitting. Now I need you to help me preach on today, can you, can you help me preach? This morning, uh, I need your help. I was talking with Pastor on Wednesday of this week, and he knew I was coming in town, and he said, so you're going to preach for me on Sunday? And he's my pastor, so I, I don't say no when he asks me to do something, or he tells me that I'm going to do something. I don't say no, so I said, yes, sir. I got it. He said, good, 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 good. I, I know you got it. And I said, well, bless the Lord. So the message today, uh, it, it's the message. I don't, I don't, can, can I have a little bit of preaching liberty today? Can, uh, I, I, I really don't want to preach to church goers today. I, I want to preach to some folks that have been walking with the Lord for a while or a short while. Someone that has committed their life to the Lord, not just someone who, you know, makes church going something that's just repetitious. It's just something that you do out of the norm. Maybe you grew up coming to church and you just feel that that's... Be but I don't want to talk to those people, although the message is for you, but I really want to talk to some folks that have been walking with the Lord, some folks that uh, know that every day isn't sunshine, every day isn't a good day, but it's a good day that I'm with the Lord. But I, I want to talk to some folks that have had some heartaches, I want to talk to some folks that have had some setbacks, I, I want to talk to some folks that have been through some things, lost some loved ones, been on their last dime, some folks So that when you say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? I don't want to just use that as a cliche that we use in church language, but someone that can say it from the bottom of their belly is a hard one. That's what I really want to 
Timothy. The second chapter, beginning at the second verse. And when you find it, I ask that you would rest to your feet as we read this particular scripture. It's not the only scripture that we're going to read today. But it is the foundation scripture that I want to use. Paul is talking to his son in the ministry, Timothy. And he tells Timothy to endure hardship with us like a good soldier of Christ. No one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. The title of this message on today is whose army are you serving in? Look at your neighbor. Help me, help me preach today. Say, neighbor, whose army are you serving in? You may be sick. When I flew in town today, and as, I, as we were riding around Fayette, one of the things that became apparent, as it is normally this time of year, that you see a lot of flags in particular places. The flags may be at a, on a cemetery or in a memorial place. But as the nation prepares to observe Memorial Day. Now we know that Memorial Day is a time to observe those men and women that have served in the armed forces that have lost their lives. And a very real aspect, every time we open our Bible, we are witnessing and living through the lives of those Christians, those godly men and women that stood for the cross as we look into their lives and God breathes the words to us through them for us. So we all are serving as soldiers in God's army. Look at your neighbor and neighbor. You enlisted when you get your life to Christ. Come on, tell your neighbor, tell, 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 shake your neighbor and neighbor. You enlisted when you gave your life to Christ. So Paul tells like a good soldier. In the previous chapter, the sixth, first Timothy, the sixth chapter, he told Timothy, beginning at that 12th verse, he said to fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Paul tells Timothy to fight the good fight of faith. You do realize that you are on a battlefield. In the spiritual realm, every 
day there is a battle that goes on. Whether that's a battle within or a battle without, we are in a battle. And the devil is our adversary. Make no mistake about it. You are in a battle. Now I said I wanted to talk to some folks that are afraid to admit that they're in a battle. The first person in the battle that you have to deal with is
many, 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 many folks have fallen shipwreck because they haven't been fully prepared or dressed for battle. Folks don't have a spirit of love. They ain't dressed for battle. Folks that are short-tempered, they ain't dressed for battle. Folks that have little endurance, little patience, they ain't dressed for battle. Your name's a neighbor. He ain't talking about you. He ain't talking about you. He ain't, he don't know, I don't know your business. I, I, I don't know what's going on in your life. He ain't talking about you. He talking about, he talking about, he talking about your other neighbor. It's not in here today. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what he's talking about. The, the, one, the one that ain't in here today. The, you know, the one that only come to church on those special occasions. Easter. Christmas, Mother's Day. Those ones, the ones, the ones, the ones, the ones. Let me move on. I get in trouble. Okay. Let me move on. Let me move on. But we are in a fight. We are in a struggle. Day to day. First person we have to deal with every morning is the person that we see in the mirror. in the mirror to, 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 to transform, to be more like you and to not be like what he or she used to be, but I want to be like you. I want to press toward that mark for the high calling, and I can't do that always looking in the rear view mirror. Hell, what are you talking about looking in the rear view mirror? Those things that keep your focus from looking forward. Ask your name to name
comes from God. I, I, I know the world says that it's from you. And you can be all you can be. And you're supposed to be a bag of chips and everything. But if you want to stay safe and stay holy, the power is from God. And not from us. That's what Paul said. Realize when Paul is painting this letter, he's in a jail cell. He's not driving in a Rolls Royce. He's not riding in a Cadillac. He's not finely suited. You know all these things that the world says, this is how you know you have success. Paul's in a jail cell. Here's what he says. He says, we are hard pressed on every side. Anybody ever been hard pressed? Talk to some real folks now. Hard pressed on every side. Didn't think you could see your way out, but you focused on Jesus. He says, we are hard pressed on every side, but we are not crushed. Anybody been perplexed? But not in despair. Persecuted. Anybody had anyone talk bad about them? Slander their name. Say everything about them under the sun. But not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. This is verse. He says, always carrying around in our body the death of Jesus. And this is the key, this is the key. The death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. So you thought the trouble that you were going through was just for you. You thought that the despair that you was going through was just for you. But don't you know that heaven is taking note of how you do things and how you come out of things? Who's getting the glory out of our lives? God gets the glory. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake. So that his life may be revealed in our mortal body. So then death is at work in us. Anyone dying to Christ today? Death is at work in us, but the life is at work in you. is at work in you. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. Over in John, the 16th chapter, the 33rd verse, this is what the world don't want you to know, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to let the secret out of the bag. I'm going to let the secret out of the bag. This is what the world don't, don't, don't want you to know. John 16 and 33, it says, In the world, you shall have tribulation. But be a good cheer. I have overcome the world. Do I have any overcomers in here today? I mean, do I really have any overcomers in here today? I'm not talking about someone that, you know, they, they, you, 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 you broke your nail and you, your whole day was messed up because you broke your nail or your petition gave you a bad head stop. I'm not talking about that type of overcomer. I'm talking about a, a real overcomer. Some things that should have wiped you out, should have taken you out here, but you're still standing. Oh, but that 
We're resting on our feet. 